Hi there. Looks like I channel in at this video. We're going to do a review on some 1 to 64 diecast model cars made by Maisto. At least they should be 1 to 64. So stay with me to the end of this video. We're going to do a review on these cars. Don't forget to subscribe my channel in case you haven't subscribed yet. Give me your thumbs up, share this video and click the bell for new. So let's take a better look at those cars. Nineteen sixty four Galaxy five hundred XL. Those two models are rather custom cars. They do not really look bad as custom cars. They've got those very big wheels with low profile tires. Those are not really my favorite. Painting qualities are good. They have some proportion issues, such as the lower line below the doors that would be would show a, a little too thick threshold. This is a typical Maisto issue, but I'm not going to mess around with these cars. I'm just going to leave them the way they are since they are custom cars and they look nice the way they are. They've got to trim some details. They're cast in metal. Rails and rear bumpers are made in plastic with a good quality chrome. The interior matches outside and inside colors, so they are either white and blue or red and blue depending on the color of the car and the tail lights look really good as cast in metal and painted on windows are slightly the details tinted of the 64 for galaxies the grill the headlights bumper directional lights and the bumper are pretty well reproduced in the plastic chrome piece very good and realistic tail lights a rear trim and the rear bumper and a tinted windows front to front you can notice trim that was cast in metal and painted on and the different wheels for the 1955 Chevrolet Nomads. The yellow one uh, looks a little vector flame concerning in the painting. Uh, the painting quality is good. They've got some pretty good trim that are pretty good trim that's cast in metal and painted on. They have a pretty good quality. I would say that they also have chrome bumpers that are made in plastic. They're hoods open and the engines are full of chrome and details. They have road cages inside since they're custom cars. And I would say that the only issue those cars have is you can notice they are a little bit too high. As we take a closer look at the doors, we notice that the doors are a little higher than they should be actually. Moments. We can notice headlights are made with decals the tail lights they're painted on they're all cast in metal they're pretty well made the mufflers are a little bit too exaggerated the front bumper especially is a little bit too thick they've got those aftermarket extra trims they look okay i would just say that these bumpers look a little bit exaggerated the wheels are also a little bit too exaggerated wheel wells especially in the rear are a little bit too wide it's okay since this is a custom car. One criticism about this car is this seems to be a little bit too high. Anyway, I'm just going to leave these cars the way they are. I've got roll cages inside. The roll cage looks a little bit too thick. A little sand and a little filing would make it look more realistic. Rim is good. Painting is pretty good. It's got some issue here in this yellow Nomad hood. They even got the hood ornaments, they're cast in metal. The opening hoods with a chrome piece and some painted details. In 1965 Cadillac DeVille, so we've got two models. One is painted in primer and the other one is painted in flat black with some flames and red details in the painting. The black Cadillac has got red wheels and the primer Cadillac has got the black wheels. There are steel wheels with no hubcaps front and the rear ends are made in chrome plastic with very good quality. I would say the chrome is pretty good. They have almost no flashings, no glass markings. The other trims on the cars are restricted to the trims around the window openings, windshield and back window. They're cast in metal and painted on. They've got some good detail in the interior. They've got some good detail in the grill. They have those stickers in the rear windows. I personally don't like that too much. They're not bad models, and I would say they are the ones with the most correct proportions. Although I think they are a little smaller than 1 to 64, and the other ones are a little bit 65 bigger. 65 Cadillac DeVille. They've got some pretty good detail in the front and the grill, with a bumper, a rear, the tail lights, and the trim. They have very good proportions. I would say they are the best models in this review. The painted steel wheels, the red wheels look a little bit like plastic, perhaps a little 
painting detail would improve them. The cars in general are well made. 1960 Ford Galaxy Starliner. This is a custom model. We can notice by the custom grill mesh that's got only horizontal straight lines instead of being a checkered grill like the real car. By looking at my 1 to 18 Ford Starliner video in which I show a light blue Ford Galaxy Starliner made by Earl. This one has got this metallic green with white. White interior matches the top. Tail lights, headlights, wheels and tires, trim, grill. They all look very good with the good realism. The scale is not exactly Custom 1 to 64. Grill. This grill looks a little bit too narrow compared to the original grill. The original grill would have thinner modems around it and a different mash. As a custom grill, it doesn't look bad. It's got some pretty good headlights, bumpers. These lines are very attractive and they are unique since the Ford Galaxy Starliner was just produced back in 1960. Pretty good tail lights. The chrome trim was also painted body color in this case, since this is a custom car. Trims and fins were all respected. It doesn't look 1960 bad at all. Pontiac Bonneville. I don't remember having seen this car made by different manufacturers. I think only by Brooklyn in a 1 to 43 scale. I'm not quite sure of it. It's an interesting model car, it's an interesting car. The passenger's compartment seems to be a little bit too short for the car. The rear end seems to be a little bit too long. It looks like a pickup. But it's not really a bad model car. It's got those big wheels, it's got those chrome bumpers, there are separate parts. Bumpers look a little bit too high. The vent windows are open, which is an interesting feature in some Johnny Lightning cars they are closed, they are cast in metal and closed and painted on. The interior is all what made in white. What I would criticize about this car is this bumper and this bumper look a little bit too high. The side looks a little bit too high. Perhaps it could be diminished in a half millimeter, I would say. They would look a little bit more realistic. I'm not quite sure, but I think the CPR should go a little bit more to the rear. You know, headlights and grill and lines of a car in general look good. Around the taillights and the Pontiac ladders, bumpers look a little bit too high, but they are okay in the width. This car is really 1962 Chevy Bel Air bubble top and a Chevy Biscayne station wagon. They are side by side because I want to do a comparison between proportions. As we notice, when we look at the bumpers, the Biscayne has got more realistic proportions than the Bel Air. The Bel Air has bumpers that look a little bit too high. But on the other hand, Bel Air grill is more realistic and more according to the stock model and cast in metal and painted on. Scan grill is a plastic piece. Chevy Bel Air has a row cage inside. The row cage looks a little bit too thick and the interior of both cars have some pretty good detail for custom cars. The Bel Air features an opening hood and a detailed engine. I still like the Chevy Biscayne better than the Bel Air. 62 Chevy Bel Air and the 62 Chevy Biscayne of station wagon. Those are exactly from the same line of 1962. And this one looks more realistic. Although this grill looks custom grill instead of a real grill, that the real grill would be like that. And the headlights also look a little more realistic in the Chevy Bel Air because they have those bezels that really mock the original ones, although they are not painted. This looks in a better proportion. The bumper has a correct height. In this case, it looks like a truck bumper. It looks a little bit too high. In general, they don't look bad. The engine bay and the engine are a single piece plastic chrome and painted parts. And the hood hinges are a little bit too thick. Perhaps it would be better make this car with a hood shut, but with better proportions. Rear ends. The same thing. The skin has much better proportions than the lair. You can notice how high this is, and how high the rear bumper is. And here, much more. The undercarriages are all made in plastic. They do not look bad. This is the Pontiac, the Cadillac, a Ford Galaxy, the 1960 Ford Galaxy Stereo Liner, Chevy Biscayne for 1962, the Nomad and the Bel Air. And we can notice that these. For the Caddy, the Pontiac, the two Galaxies, and the Chevy Biscayne were pretty well made. They're quite simple, but they've got some decent detail. The only exaggerated 
parts are these muffler tips for the nomad, really look like a horn, and the one for the Bel Air. As usual, we're not telling you wrong information about the cars. I refer to some literature, and in this case, I'm using the book cars of the 1960s. On page 127, just like I said, we have the 1960 Pontiac Bonneville, and that Maestow model car, as we can notice, has some proportion issues. Side is a little bit too high, the bumper is a little bit too high, and the cab is a little too short. On page 136, we have the 62 Impala that has the exact same front of the 1962 Chevrolet Bel Air Biscayne. We can notice how thick the bumper in the model car is. Chevy Bel Air with a bubble top. Just From like zero that to one. ten, I would give these cars between seven and eight. They're not the best ones, but they're not the worst ones. They're very interesting model cars. I would say the best ones in proportions are the two 1964 Ford Galaxies and the two 1965 Cadillacs. But the other ones are not necessarily bad. They're just a little bit exaggerated in some details. So I'd like to thank you for all likes, views, for all subscriptions. Please don't forget to subscribe my channel in case you haven't subscribed yet. Give me your thumbs up and share this video. And also let me know down in your comments what you think about the cars and about the video. And don't forget to click the bell for news. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.